Hello, welcome to Iggy's Toy Parade and Soldier Review. This is your host, Iggy. Yay. Thank you for that. Guys, this is going to be a real short video. I found these die-cast vehicles in a baggie at the bottom of the box that I was going through. Here's some of the things I still have to put together to show to you. <laughs> not looking forward to that. I'm looking forward to showing it to you, but not putting it together. It's probably missing pieces and stuff. Anyway, these are die-cast fi uh, figures. I do that quite a bit, I noticed. And I don't know who made them. I, they're all, found them all out of the package. But uh, we have an X-Wing that's missing two of its laser cannons. Uh being here ouch that hurt um and over there is missing as well <coughs> sorry i'm very allergic to cats and on my porch there's like a dozen cats hanging out I made the mistake of feeding one, and the next day he came back with all his friends. Uh, there are cats that people moved away and, and just left them. But it makes me sick. I don't know. I don't know what to do. There's nobody else taking care of them. Uh, Millennium Falcon. Let me see if it has any marking on the bottom. Oh, there is something here, guys. It says 1996. It's not focusing. It's supposed to have an automatic focus. All right, it's not focusing on it. But I think I saw 1996. Let's see if it's on the Star Destroyer. It says 1998. But that's all. This is a weird one. It looks like it's made out of corduroy. <laughs> I don't know what... The, it's not very well done compared to some of them. Like, like this one, for instance. This TIE Fighter... This is very nicely done. They kind of stepped on on it with this one. It looks like corduroy. It's just not very detailed. Each one of these has weight to it because they're um, they're of course die cast metal. Does this have a marking on it? I don't see one. Okay, so let's, uh, before I uh, leave out, we'll do a quick review of what we have here. Uh, the TIE Fighter, um, the TIE Bomber, the Star Destroyer, Millennium Falcon, and X-Wing, and these are all die-cast and to give you some uh, notion about the size of these things, I, I'll hold one in my hand. And you can see there that they're quite small. Uh, you still can get these in the store. I saw these at Target. Uh, they're different packaging than they had years ago, naturally. Because uh, these are almost 20 years old. Uh, but they, they were die-cast vehicles, and you still can get them. So if you're interested in collecting these small items, you, like let's say you don't have much room, or you want to put it on a shelf at your office, if you're bold enough to do that, because you know how people are. Oh, he collects toy stuff. Oh, he must be one of those guys that's a mass murderer. Uh, no, not quite, but thank you for such positive reinforcement. 
Oh, I bet you seduce little boys. No. The fact that I like toys has nothing to do with mental illness. There's people out there that like football. They played football when they were kids. Does that make them mass murderers? No. They liked football when they were a child, and they still like football as an adult. So don't be stupid with that kind of talk. As they say in uh, uh, Animal House, don't be a moron, you moron. Okay, guys, I promised a short video, and uh, I start ranting and, and forgot that I wanted to do a short video. But like I said, you still can get these at Target if you're interested. All right, that's it for today. Where would you like to go? You know what? Let's go to the Holiday Theater and see t two movies plus cartoons for 50 cents each. That sounds like a deal. Now you can get some dots and milk duds and maybe a sugar daddy and popcorn. That would be awesome. By the way, I won a Schwinn Stingray bike, bike in a, a raffle at the theater. I kept looking at my ticket. It was the winning numbers for the Schwinn uh, Stingray bicycle. It was a beautiful bicycle. And it was, I won it. And I was so terrified of getting up in front of everyone and walking to the stage and showing him my ticket because I thought he would say, oh, no, you didn't win. But I did win, and I gave the ticket to my brother and told him, and he said, why didn't you go up there? And my brother ran up there, and the guy said, the contest's over. Get out of here, kid. I'm like, oh, my God. A lot of people that worked with kids back in the 60s, <laughs> they, they didn't know how to talk to kids. It was pretty bad. I remember there was this uh, truck that – uh, looked like a, on the back of it was a spaceship. And I can't remember what company it was advertising, but we kids would get on to this uh, spaceship thing and sit down and they would show a cartoon of us uh, supposedly being launched into space and the thing would shake and kind of like uh, Disney's Mission to Mars, if you remember that ride. And then uh, the video, well, the guy, the, the video ended and the guy said, all right, everyone get out. And I'm like, this guy is real smooth with the kids. But they, uh, they're like, I don't want any, find any uh, trash on the floor. You better pick up that stuff on the floor or you're going to be in big trouble. Get out. And I'm like, oh my gosh. <clears throat> and we kids would hurriedly. Uh, escape the. I guess we're lucky he let us go. <laughs> now that I think about it, anyway, it was weird. I remember going to the barber shop and it was like that. The guy was an ex Navy barber from World War II and he was really rough with us kids. And my brother worked at a liquor store. My brother Robert w worked at a liquor store and he walked by, he would walk home uh, because. We, we didn't live too far from there. And uh, the guy was passed out in a chair, and there was a bottle of whiskey on the floor, and all his money was on the floor, and his door was open. And I don't know how late my brother was working. I don't know if they had laws to protect teens at that time. Uh, but it was probably like 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock, something like that. His door is wide open. He's passed out. And there's money all over the floor. So my brother picked up all the money off the floor and uh, put it back in his register and shut the register drawer and uh, tried to wake the guy up. But uh, I don't know why he was so nice to the guy. The guy was a jerk. But more than likely suffering from post-traumatic stress syndrome because all those World War II vets, they never had any counseling for that. 
and uh, they saw horrific things. They lost their friends. Some of them lost limbs. So they, they were permanently affected by that war. So, you know, the war ends in 1945, but for the veterans on all sides of the conflict, it, can you imagine being a Russian veteran and you go home and your village is completely destroyed and your family's been murdered? Plus all the things you saw on the battlefield. Those guys must have really gotten messed up over that. Anyway, that's it for Iggy. I'm not sure how I uh, diverged into stories like that. But uh, I suppose because I'm old and I figure that I better get my stories out there before I kick the bucket. Do I have a bucket? I think I have a bucket in the closet. Okay, guys. Take care.